But what was the basic drive to keep the band happy? Um, the music, really. You know, when we start, once we start getting back into the recording. So before every album, like it's, um, it's really hard to get back into it after you've been off the road for about two or three months. And it takes a hell of a long time to get back in, you know, get into each other personally and then get into the music, you know. Like usually the first attempts uh, aren't very, really, don't seem to be coming off, like, you know, and you get a bit fed up, like, and you start thinking about things. Everything just gets on top of it. Paranoid, uh, super so the bloody Sabbath. There's a definite riff there, which is you know, purely Black Sabbath. They, they hard to come up with. Um, it's it's all down to feeling, you know. I mean, like we can sit down and try and get a, a song together, and nothing will happen. And then, uh, like Sabbath, bloody Sabbath, and Paranoid, we just. It just came, just all of a sudden, just came straight out of the blue, and we just played the whole thing just all the way through. Just straight off, like Tony, Tony started playing Sabbath, Buddy Sabbath, the main riff. Mm. And like, me and Bill just came in on bass and drums, like, and we just played together, and the whole thing just came, just materialised. Like, um, it was one of the last albums, Boral Architect, and uh, it took me about three months. I, I, I just kept sitting down, like, trying, really trying to think of these lyrics, like, for about three months. And one day, I just woke up, it was a lovely day. Yeah. Went for a walk in my forest, like, came back in, just wrote the whole thing down.
Again, we went over to LA. We'd done the same procedure we did with Volume 4, but it didn't work on uh, 27th. We went over, rented a house for six months and went over there and same house and everything. It just didn't work. We couldn't get the, just didn't get the same atmosphere and we couldn't write. So we ended up coming back to England and went to Clearwell Castle in, in Wales. <laughs> Welcome to episode five of my Black Sabbath album deep dive series. Today, I'm talking about their fifth studio album, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. This was released in November of 1973. The band commenced recording sessions for the album after their tour to support the volume four album, and they were exhausted physically, emotionally. They were still doing a lot of cocaine, and when it came time to convene and actually record, for the album, they were fresh out of ideas. Tony Iommi had writer's block. The rest of the band were just waiting around for him to come up with something. They had gone back to the original house where they had recorded volume four, but inspiration was just not coming. They were sitting around 
kind of coked out of their heads, dead tired, and couldn't come up with anything. And so they decided to scrap the sessions in LA and move back to the UK where they rented Clearwell Castle in the Forest of Dean. And in the medieval surroundings, lo and behold, Tony Iommi came up with the riff for the title track, Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. And as Ozzy said in the interviews, he knew once Tony came up with that riff, they were back and they weren't going to have any more difficulties composing, writing, and recording the album. Now, Black Sabbath is expanding their sound even further. They're starting to use synthesizers, strings, increasingly branching out, if you will, with their sound. I don't know that this is any more of an experimental than, say, the Volume 4 album is. This happens to be my favorite Black Sabbath album. I don't know why. I just find it to be very melodic. But also, I think the songwriting is solid once again. Ozzy has said this was the end of their classic period, and it was kind of at least for him all downhill with Black Sabbath anyway. I happen to think the next album is also excellent, but you can kind of see where after this album, they kind of lost the magic that they had in their early period. This is my cassette copy of Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. This is the original uh, CD release. And then this is the remastered version with the original back cover artwork. All right, so let's talk about the songs on this great album. It opens with the title track with that heavy, heavy Tony Iommi riff, one of his most memorable. It's definitely a harder rocking song, and it is just straightforward classic Black Sabbath. Not really anything innovative here, but I mean, after Black Sabbath had done their first four albums... There weren't really many other places to go that weren't going to alienate their fans anyway. But Black Sabbath Bloody Sabbath is just a great balls-to-the-wall rocker. The next track, A National Acrobat, kind of has a bit of a shuffle beat to it, I guess. But it's still a cool, straightforward rocker. You got some great lyrics by Geezer Butler talking about DNA and how all of our life experiences are kind of wrapped up in our DNA. <laughs>
But I like, again, how these songs, you never know where they're going to go. They start off in one direction, and then they make a sharp left turn. And you got a little bit of that towards the end of this song, but still another great track. The next song is a Tony Iommi instrumental called Fluff. I thought it was called Fluff because it's a piece of musical fluff, but apparently it was actually titled after Alan Fluff Freeman, who was a BBC disc jockey who had been very friendly towards Black Sabbath. But nonetheless, it's an okay instrumental. The last track on side one is Sabra Cadabra with keyboards from Rick Wakeman. Yes, the Rick Wakeman from Yes. And you would think any song that Rick Wakeman would play on would be sort of progressive in sound, but it's, this is really more kind of a boogie rock track. And I know, again, it kind of veers off, makes a left turn towards the end of the song. But I like the keyboards on this track, and I like the fact that it's sort of a different kind of a sound, a different sort of a mood and feel, more upbeat, up-tempo kind of a Black Sabbath song.
it's just kind of a cool sounding Black Sabbath track. They could have easily arranged this in the typical Black Sabbath formula, but I like this interesting arrangement. Side two opens up with Killing Yourself to Live, which is another heavy, heavy Black Sabbath rocker. Not as heavy. There's nothing on this record as heavy as they had done on Volume 4 or even on Master of Reality. And I wouldn't say they're necessarily selling out on this album, but they're just kind of, at least to me, feels a little more commercial on this record. Next to Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. This is the heaviest thing on the album. The next track is Who Are You? And this is actually Ozzy playing the Moog synthesizer. He had just acquired one, and he wasn't really sure how to play it, but he did manage to come up with this melody. You've got lyrics. I think these were written by Bill Ward, if I'm not mistaken, just kind of imagining God as this malevolent deity, I guess, if you will. I think it's kind of cool. I mean, it's the most adventurous thing, I think, that Black Sabbath tried on this album, and it's, it's all right. Seems more like a synthesizer experiment than anything else, but I don't hate it. I can appreciate it that it's very different. Then it segues right into Looking Forward Today, which is another melodic rocker. I like how Ozzy is pretty much carrying the melody on this song. It's not terribly heavy, but this is what I mean. And it's kind of more commercial sound than Black Sabbath had had on any previous album. And then the final track, Spiral Architect, which is just a tour de force. It's an epic sounding song. They've got some strings on here. Ozzy is singing at the top of his range. 
And it just has a feel like Black Sabbath. We're trying to come up with something very majestic, very epic. I think it's a very cool way to close out the album. I like this album a lot. I, like I say, it's my favorite one. I think because of all the melodic elements, the synthesizers on here, them trying some different things. It's not as groundbreaking as Volume 4 or Master of Reality, but it's still a solid Black Sabbath album. Another thing we got to talk about is the album artwork. This sinister scene on the cover. This is actually a pencil drawing. And I forget the guy's name, but this is the guy who drew or who made the Star Wars posters, the original trilogy, the posters for that. So he had done a lot of film work and Black Sabbath commissioned him to do the artwork on here. Unfortunately, I've got these stickers obscuring a little bit of the cover. So maybe I'll just show this one. But you've got the cover of the guy in bed being tormented by demons. And then you flip it over. And presumably this is somebody on their deathbed. And now he's surrounded by more angelic figures. I love the blue green tones here. And then the orange, red, yellow tones. It's just an iconic album uh, cover artwork. So anyway, that's my take on Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath. Let me know what you think of the album. How do you feel these hold together as a collection of songs? Hope you're enjoying this series and take care.